All right, welcome everybody. Um, I want to keep these calls, these director bound calls, sort of conversational. So if you are in a quiet spot and um, you, you know, you don't have a lot of background noise like TV and music and, and children running through the background, feel free to leave your, you know, your phone off or your iPad or whatever off un unmuted. That way um, we can kind of have this a little more conversational than normal. Okay. Um, but if you have a question, uh, I can, I'm going to leave it on the screen where I can see everybody's hands if you have your video on. So if you have a question, like raise your hand, um, and I'll stop and like, you know, call on you. So first of all, let's talk about why would you want to be a director with Pampered Chef? So hopefully you guys downloaded your file here. Did everybody get that? nod your head if you did. Awesome. Yay, I see lots of nods. Okay. And you people yes. that aren't turning on your videos, I can't see you. Why, Sherry, why is your video not on? Oh, there she is. Okay, good. Okay. So if you look at that first page, and this is something that I sent you in the Director Bound Invitations, um, this talks about just some of the perks of directorship. Okay. Um, so the question, just think about it. How many of you are getting exactly what you want from your business? Do you want more from your business? Well, the next step is to become a director. Um, so let's talk about why you want to give yourself a promotion this year and become a director. What do you guys think? Any, any thoughts? Why do you want to become a director and give yourself a promotion? You can unmute because I can't see like mouths moving. I, can't. I need big money. <laughs> big money. No whammies. No whammies. Do you, guys do you guys remember that show where it was like the no whammies? Okay. And they yes. were like, no whammies. And they would hit the thing. So there was a time when, I don't I think it was over the summer or something. And I just kept getting all these low orders, like crazy low orders. And every time I would open order email, I'm like, no whammies, no whammies. So yeah. So no, big money, big money, Susan. Okay. What else? More free. More free. I like that. Yeah, those yeah, director indeed. sample packages. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the products. Yeah. What else? Give me, give me, give me. Why would you want a promotion? We got money. We got free stuff. Is that it? Nobody else wants. Yeah, Christy. Move up, free. Move up in the business. A Move car. Up. I mean, a car. Okay, yes. moving up in the it's business. Who said that? Accomplishment. It is an accomplishment. It's a huge accomplishment. Susan, what'd you say? That moving up in the business, just um, to know that, you know, you're, if you were in a company, say you worked for, you know, as an employee for a company, you would look for a promotion. This way you're promoting yourself. Yep. Very and good. that's one of the things I like, I like it, you know, so. Yeah. And Christy's looking for a car, right? Isn't that what you said, Christy? Yes. <laughs> a larger vehicle. <laughs> a larger vehicle. I get it. I get it. So a couple of things you get, you guys saw these flyers. I want to run through them really quick. You do get the increased overrides. So that's the more money. Um, you get 250 Pamper Chef dollars when you promote, which is awesome sauce. You get to spend that on whatever you want. Um, you also get, you're allowed to spend um, $100 in professional development every year. So you can use that on training and just making yourself a better leader. Um, those free samples that Sherry was talking about, when those director boxes show up, I mean, there's some days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to be a director anymore. And then those boxes show up at just the right time. And it's like, yes, this is why I do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's those free boxes. Um, you also get discounted trip points. So you don't have to have as many points to earn the trips, which is really nice. Um, you get special recognition, you get, you know, stuff on stage, you get all sorts of fun things. You also get additional training. Like today, we had a national leader call, and we have some secrets, and we can't tell you because we were told we can't tell you. But, um, yeah, you can't tell. Mm -mm, Allison, shh, I know you're on the call. So, yeah, so we get some advanced notification of things, too. So there's lots of things that go along with directorship. And if you look at page two, if you have it with you, so those of you who are still within your first 90 days, I know some of you on this call are, so if you're still within your first 90 days, you can actually fast track to director. So when you promote to director, um, within the same month that your 90th day falls, um, you get a bonus. 
So this is something that is totally doable because we've seen it happen. I did it, Trisha did it, and we actually have a couple people on track to do it. Um, so you've got the $500 bonus that you get. You also get a $500 bonus when you maintain for the next three months. And then you get a $1,000 bonus if you promote to advanced director in your first six months. So that's $2,000 sitting on the table, okay? Um, if you have questions about like the qualifications and the dates and stuff on that, definitely reach out to me or your director and let me know and I can walk you through that. All right, so let's talk about the money because that was something that you guys talked about that you want more money. Um, and I think of Jerry Maguire every time I hear that. It's like, show me the money. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the money. So if you look at these pages, this breaks down, it says next pages in your guide, it breaks down how you earn more money, all right? Um, so the career plan, this is how we do it, okay? Senior consultant, that's the first thing, and we actually had some senior consultant promotions this month, so that was super cool. Um, when you have that very first month, when you have one new team member and that team member is active, you promote to, you have to be active too, um, you promote to senior consultant. So you actually earn 1% on your uh, own sales and a 1% uh, override on your new consultant's sales. So that comes out to about 6% of a raise. It's a 6% more of a paycheck. Even though it's only 1% override, you're increasing your income by 6%. Now, I don't know many places where you can work for a very short period of time and get a 6% raise. Like Susan, for example, um, just started and she had her first consultant before she submitted her first party. Okay, I don't know how you can get um, that sort of raise anywhere else, all right? Not legally anyway. Um, next would be team leader. So team leader is you're going to have two new team members and these have to be direct to you, not indirect. So when we talk about indirect recruits, let's pretend Susan, so Susan recruited Lauren. So let's pretend Lauren recruits her friend Nancy. And so Nancy would be an indirect recruit to Susan. She is not direct. She is not someone that Susan personally recruited. So to be a team leader, you need two. And you actually start earning a 2% override on yourself and your team. All right. There are some maintenance requirements there. You have to have a minimum of 750 in personal sales and then 2,500 between the three of you in sales. But that comes out to almost a 15% pay raise. So that's significant. Okay. And you can do that really quickly. A lot of people sign two people a month. I average about two a month. So you can literally do that in a month. And then let's talk about director. So director, it's if you look at that page, um, just the baseline director. So just doing the minimum. They've got five consultants. They've got the five thousand in team sales. Um, they're going to earn thirty five percent more than just their straight commission. Okay, that's huge when you start looking at the numbers. And then as you build your team, it goes up to, you could, I mean, it, the sky's the limit, honestly, but in this example, it's 118% more than just your minimum that you earn on yourself. It's significant, guys. Very significant. All right, I'm going to get back from somebody. I don't know who that is. Okay. Um, so just think about those things. The bigger your team gets, the more you earn. It's pretty much that simple. And then you keep moving up. So the next page kind of talks about um, upper level directors. So we have two upper level directors on our team, myself as a senior director, and then Trisha, who's an advanced director. Um, so we actually start earning as an upper level director, our, um, our income bumps a little bit more because there are just bigger expectations for us. So instead of earning 3%, override on our personal sales and on our team sales, we actually are in 4%. Now that may not seem like much, but I will tell you the day that I jumped from director to advanced director was the biggest jump in my income. From advanced to senior, it wasn't that big of a jump because the commissions didn't change or the overrides didn't change. So for example, I'm going to give you an example. It's a difference of 3% to 4% as an upper level director. Um, I earn that on my personal team and myself, and then our first generation teams, okay? So like Allison is a second generation to me. I don't earn 4% on her and her team. It's a little bit different. But on my first generation and on um, my personal team, I do. So 
last month, our, my personal team and my first generation team did $51,000 in sales. So what's that 1% of 51,000? That's $510. So that was an extra $510 that I wouldn't have earned if I hadn't been an upper level director. Does that make sense? So it just kind of starts compounding. So that's something to think about as well. And did you guys know that there are some people in our company that earn as much as 33% on their own personal sales? 33%. So you've got, as a consultant, you earn a minimum, or you earn a, you can earn up to 25%, because we, remember, we have tiered commission structure, right? So when you hit 4,000 in sales per month, and we have a lot of people on our team that do it, you get 25%. So that's a thousand dollars minimum, right? Now, once you hit fifteen thousand in career sales, you get a two percent pay increase. So you just get just for longevity and just for being with the company for a while and doing some stuff, you get um, your your minimum then becomes twenty seven or your maximum becomes twenty seven percent as a consultant. Now add in the three percent or the 4% they earn as an upper level director. In okay, case so that's 27 plus four, um, that's 31%. And then if you're really on your A game and you're an elite seller, you get an additional 2%. So I actually earn 33% of my own personal sales. Okay, it's a, it's a lot, all right? That makes a huge difference in your paycheck. And I, so the next thing I want you guys to think about, we've gone through the money. I want you to think about why you want to be a director. You guys told me some of the things, some of the perks, but I really want you to think about why. And you know, we're not going to like hash through all that right now. Um, so why do you want to be a director with Paper Chef? What would it mean for you and your family? And don't just say, you know, the free products or more money. I want you to be specific about it. Really kind of think about what would that mean to your family, to you as an individual. Maybe it's the recognition. Um, maybe it's being paid what you're worth. Um, I don't know what it is for you. It's going to be different for everybody. Okay? So that's something I want you to be kind of noodling around in there. And we talked a little bit about the requirements. So does anybody want to tell me what their requirements are? Not a director that's on the call, but somebody that's, does somebody want to tell me what their requirements are to promote to director? I know I've talked to a lot of you about this. Who wants to volunteer? If you guys don't make eye contact, I'm just going to call on somebody. <laughs> I'm going to call on Sherry. She made eye contact first. Okay, Sherry, what are the requirements to promote to director? I did not look at you. <laughs> You need to have five active consultants under you, um, and is it at least three direct? So three that you, it can be a combination of any five? Yep. So you can, you can recruit one person and she can go get four? Yes. It would be a simultaneous okay. promotion on those. <clears throat> I, I don't recommend doing it that way, right. but yes, you can. <laughs> okay. And then um, personal Sales of seven fifty, mm -hmm. and is it twenty five hundred for your team? Fifteen hundred, five hundred, huh? five thousand, five thousand. Oh, for director, yes, yes, okay. five thousand. Yeah, team leader twenty five hundred. So you have to in one single month, you have to have five active team members. And active is one hundred and fifty. They do not have to be qualified yet at twelve fifty. They just have to be active. So you can have newbies. They go out there and collect a bunch of catalog orders, or that do a quick um, Facebook party or something, whatever it is, to be active. This is less than one party. Okay, so one hundred and fifty is all they have to do. They all have five have to be active in one month. And you have to have a total between the six of you of $5,000 in sales. Now you, as the potential director, have to submit at least seven fifty dollars in sales. Now I'm talking about minimums here. And one thing I want you guys to internalize as we go through this is leaders never work to minimums. Ever. Okay? If you want to be successful as a leader and continue to grow your team, you never work to minimums. Okay? Um, one thing I want you to think about is, you know, the leader sets the pace of the pack. So if you are producing more, your team will follow, okay? Um, uh, let's see, and Lori, Lori has said this to me before. She's like, I can't expect my team to do something that I'm not doing myself, all right? So you have to think about it that way. If you're leading, then lead by example. Um, let's see. Look at the next page in your, your thing here. 
So this is something we are going to use and kind of live by. So director bound is really a 90 day formula to get to director. So if you look at that, um, it's going to focus, we're going to focus on some key skills within the business. And I say this a lot that, you know, a lot of what we do is just, it's lather, rinse, repeat, lather, rinse, repeat. You're building your skills. You know, you're not going to be, I don't host coach the same as when I first started. I don't recruit the same as when I first started. I've honed those skills. I've got made those skills better. So we're always learning. We're always improving. But what we're going to focus on in director bound is really focusing on those key skills that you need. To, to learn and to kind of perfect. So Doris Christopher said many, many years ago when her first director team, she said two parties a week, no matter what. That was her mantra that she taught her directors to live by. Two parties a week, no matter what. And um, I've talked to, you know, I've talked to some of the field development people at home office and that is still what they teach. They still say two shows a week, no matter what. Okay. So let's look at this 90 day to director formula. If you have two shows a week, that's eight parties a month, right? Eight parties booked. Now we're going to take out two because, um, stuff happens like hurricanes. I lost four this week. <laughs> so we've got hurricanes. We've got, um, people going to the emergency room. You've got, you know, just stuff life happens, especially with live parties. I find that a little bit more. Um, for virtual parties, I find it's more the host is absent. The party still happens, but the host may not show up to the party. So your eight parties booked, the key skill that you're going to work on there is booking and prospecting to get those eight shows on your calendar. And then um, having your six parties held. So you're going to take those two away. The key skill there to keep those parties on your calendar is host coaching, right? Um, and let's say 10 guests per party. This is kind of using a, um, a live party formula, but the goal would be 10 plus guests. Um, on virtual parties, we say 30, which gives us about 15 orders, right? Most of the guests that show up to live parties are going to place an order. So it's a little bit different. Um, so that's 60 people that you're in front of every 30 days. And again, that goes skill is working on host coaching. Cause if we're host coaching, then we're getting our attendance up, which gets more us up in front of more people. Right. And then, um, we're going to take a third. We've talked about the third, a third, a third principle. You've heard me say that before. So we take a third of those 60 people. That's 20 people that you actually have a conversation with and are willing to look at information or interested in looking at information about the business. So that's our, our Q and a round. That's our spoon post. That's our, those, all those things that Kristen was talking about in that recruiting training. That's all of those things. Um, people that market on the Google form, whatever. So that gives us about a third of those people are going to be interested interested in taking home information or looking at the website or attending a virtual opportunity event. So that's informing. That's the skill, another skill that we're going to work on. If you take a third of that, that's about seven. Um, so that's seven people that agree to an opportunity chat. So that's the three-way call that you set up with your director um, and you get on the phone and, you know, we do that for lots of different reasons, but we do that really as part of training you're learning how to do an opportunity chat. Okay. You're learning how to do it well. Um, and then you're also giving that, that potential person, you're saying to them, you know what, I'm not the only person out there doing pamper chat. There's like this whole other group of people that you're going to get support from. So it gives them some reassurance as well. So that's inviting. That's a key skill that we're going to work on. And then you take a third of that, that's two people that say, yeah, I totally want to do this. Okay. So that gives you your two people per month. And we're going to, that's a key skill that we're going to work on is holding that opportunity chat. So if you do two personal recruits per month times three months, which is the 90 days, that gives you six personal recruits. Um, you also, those people that you recruited, like we talked about Susan and Lauren, Lauren's probably going to run into somebody that wants, even if she's not actively recruiting in three months, she's going to run into somebody that wants to do this, right? Okay. So that gives you two indirect recruits. So that's eight team members in 90 days. Does that make sense? Okay. That's, that's way past director minimums. Okay. Um, and then once you have those recruits, we're going to talk about, we're going to teach you guys how to do the new consultant strong start. So you'll be partnering with your director until you promote and getting those new consultants off to a strong start. Okay. Um, so let's talk about how we are going to support you during this program. 
Okay, so first of all, it's 90 days. We talked about that. So it's about those who are serious and moving up in the Pamper Chef career plan. It's based on that 90-day formula for success, and um, it begins now. Um, we're going to start with our call number one on Sunday and call number one is going to be, you don't have to write these down. I'm going to post these later, so don't write it down. So your first call is going to be pro about prospecting and booking away from parties. Second call is going to be about booking at parties. The third call is going to be about host coaching. The fourth one is going to be about informing and inviting. And then call number five is going to be how to do an opportunity chat. Okay, and then the sixth one is going to be how to get all these new consultants off to a strong start. Again, partnering with your director to have make that happen. Okay, um, so first, what do we want to do? We want to focus on what was that first thing at the top? It's eight shows on your calendar. So that's what you want to work on first is filling your calendar. Everything comes from bookings. Everything comes from bookings. So the, the, um, the first thing or the second thing, first thing, we're, I'm sorry, we're gonna support you through the program. The second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on bookings, okay? So maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, I kinda wanna do this, but my calendar is not in shape. Well, that's okay, because we're gonna work on that. Um, we are going to do a booking blitz or a booking bonanza starting on Monday. So if you need some help with that, we, you can plug into that and help fill your calendar. Remember the goal is two per week or eight per month. However you want to divide that up. I know with virtual parties, some of you guys do what I do and you start every other week. That's totally fine. So just do four and four. You're looking at eight within a 30 day period. That's what you're looking at. Does that make sense? I don't care how you make the eight work. Just make the eight work. Um, so we're going to do that. And then if you need extra help on the bookings, um, then that's something you want to reach out to your director for, or you want to reach out to me and I will help you with that. Third thing we're going to do is we're going to track it. Um, so this is important. This is part of that packet as well. So the first thing you see up here is you want to write your why and your goal for promoting to directors. So some of you have shared your goal date. It's always the first of the month. So you can put um, October 1st, November 1st, December 1st, January 1st, whatever you want to put as your goal promotion date. And then this is where you can track who your recruits are, okay? So you can track when you've got that five, whether they're active, that sort of thing. And then here we go on the bottom. The bottom is where you're going to track your numbers. You're going to say, um, you could write your host name, um, how many, what parties you held, the attendance, so this is the people that clicked going, or if it's a live party, the people that were actually there, how many people took info home, or you sent a think about it packet to, or you invited them to the opportunity event, things like that. How many people wanted to get on the phone and chat? And then how many people you signed? You also want to track your bookings. And the reason that you want to do this, guys, is because numbers don't lie. All right? They just don't. I would, I, you might be shocked to hear, like, if you say to me, I've had conversations with people, I'm like, well, how many shows do you think you do a month? And they'll be like, well, I think I do this many. And I go back and I pull up the stats and say, do you know you did this many? And usually they're shocked. They think they're doing something completely different or more than what they're actually doing. So the numbers don't lie. And I'll give you an example of this. When I first started, um, you know, I wanted to fast track and I did, but I was tracking all I knew I had to track. I knew I had to track everything. And so I was tracking my shows, how many people were at my shows, how many bookings I got. And I was looking at my calendar, like right around October-ish. I started the very end of August, like the 29th. So my first full month was September. And I'm looking at October and I was like, uh, I should have more shows on my calendar than this. Because if I'm getting two bookings for every show, where'd all my shows go? And so I reached out to um, Kathy, who's my director. And I said, I, I think there's a problem. And she couldn't see it. I, was, I had been tracking and she just couldn't see it because I was one of the, the newer people on her team that, you know, actually produced and actually sold stuff. So she was just stoked that I was like selling stuff and I was, you know, selling the same amount as her. And I reached out to Karen and I'm like, Karen, what's the deal here? Like, and she saw it immediately. She's like, yeah, there's a problem. You should have like double the shows on your calendar. And I can see that you're not getting bookings for two bookings from every show. And so then we had a, we had a chat about how to get bookings from the party. So if you will track your results, you're going to see how many cancellations you're getting. 
You're going to see how many bookings you're getting. You're going to see, you're going to see how many people are attending your parties. So you're going to see what key skills you need to work on. So at that point, I knew I needed to work on bookings at the shows. Okay. My host coaching was fine. My sales average was great. My attendance was good. I just wasn't closing the deal on the bookings. Does that make sense? So you want to track. Um, let's see. Then with the tracking, what you're going to do is you are going to, um, while you're tracking, uh, your director or I, if I'm your director, will be tracking with you. So I'm going to have a sheet for everyone on my team. And I'm going to be tracking the stats with you. And then what you're going to do is you're going to be checking in with your director once a week. This is a quick phone call. This is a 15 to 20 minute phone call. This is not where we talk about the weather or your cat or what you had for dinner. This is a quick check-in because there's a lot of you. Um, and we're going to just talk about what your results were for the week. What did you struggle with? Did you get two bookings from every show? How many people took home information? And this is where you can get coaching on what is working and what isn't. So then we can see what's going on as well. And really, guys, a lot of times it's just very small tweaks that are going to make a huge difference in your results. Very small tweaks. Karen gave me like, I don't even remember. It was just words that I was saying that were just like, when people say book a party, they hear plan a wedding. Okay, that's what they hear. Um, that's not actually what happens, but that's what people are hearing. Like, do you want to book a party? No. Or do you want to host a party? No. Do you want to have your friends over for a fun and a girls night? that sounds so much more fun than do you want to host a party? Do you want to get your friends together on Facebook and get some free stuff? That sounds so much better than do you want to host a party, right? So it's just changing up things, things like that. So that's why you're going to track. Um, let's see. The other thing, I lost my place. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Oh, okay. We're going to be talking. I talked to, we're going to be talking, um, once a week and, if you have a live party, then we're going to talk after your live party too. So if you have a live party, then I want to talk after that and see what's going on. Not just wait until your, your virtual parties close. Um, the fifth way we're going to support you is we're going to offer additional support with team meetings. Um, I'm going to say this and I may step on some toes, but you know, team meetings are not mandatory, but neither is success. Okay. You are going to get the support and the information and the training that you need when you attend team meetings. These need to be a priority, guys. So make sure you're attending team meetings. Um, if you are, you have a, a couple of consultants in your area, do a recipe night. You guys get together and try out some recipes. Um, you know, national conference. I know I sent most of you guys to save the date. So be marking that on your calendar. These are all ways that we learn and grow. Um, let's see. The next page I want you to look at. You may be thinking about this and you're like, okay, all right. It's a little freaking, you know, freaking me out a little bit. So tell me this right now, and you can raise your hand because I can see most of you. How many of you believe that you can get to director, you can promote to director in the next 90 days? I see a few hands. How many of you are lying? <laughs> How many of you are fibbing? <laughs> Jackie's like me. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the belief triangle. So this is the next page, and you'll hear me talk about this a lot because it's so true. And so the belief triangle goes like this. Your beliefs determine your actions, your actions determine your results, and your results reinforce your beliefs. So if you believe, so I'm going to use Jackie because you're honest. So if Jackie believes, I don't think I can get eight shows on my calendar, so I really don't think I can promote to director in the next 90 days. If she believes that, what would her actions be? Somebody tell me. She's got a thumb. She gave me a thumbs down. What would your actions be if that's your belief? You can unmute and tell me. Nobody has an answer. I'm She's not going to go after the bookings. So what's that? She's not going to go after the bookings if she doesn't think she can do it. Oh, she's not going to go after it. She's not going to ask, right? And so when you don't, when you don't ask, what are the results going to be? No bookings. I saw Vivian say it. No bookings. You're not going to have any bookings, right? And then is that going to, is that going to reinforce her belief? that um, she can't uh, do this? Yeah. It's going to reinforce her belief. Oh, I, I knew I couldn't do it. 
That's what she's going to say to herself. Now flip it around. Now what if you believe, if you truly believe that this is the formula that works and you believe that you can do it in the next 90 days, what are you going to do? You're going to make sure you have eight shows on your calendar. And what are the results going to be? You're going to host coach. You're going to do that. And you. Susan, I'm going to mute you. Back. There you go. Okay. So your results are going to be that you're going to get the bookings. You're going to be in front of enough people because you're going to host coach and you're going to do all the things you need to do. And then what are the results going to be? The results are going to be, you're going to recruit to a month and then you're going to start like, it's a snowball. Once you get two or three, there's like a tipping point where you're like, oh, I got this now. And how is that going to reinforce your belief? It's going to reinforce your belief that I can totally do this in 90 days. Does that make sense? So you have to think about what you're saying to yourself. One of the things I say a lot is tell the voices in your head to sit down and shut up. Okay. Check the voices in your head because we all say stuff to ourselves. We all do. Even I do. Okay. All of us say stuff to ourselves. Um, there was one time my husband, if any, whoever gets to meet my husband, um, I've said before, he doesn't say a lot, but usually when he says something, it's either really profound or it's really funny. And so I did, um, the national leader call in June and it was a lot about belief and belief triangle and stuff like that. And, um, I was griping about something. I forget what it was in July. And he looked at me and he said, um, do you need to take a dose of your own medicine? He said, you need to go back and listen to what you said to yourself. He's like, tell the voice in your head to sit down and shut up. <laughs> and I was like, you smart aleck. <laughs> so listen, don't, don't listen to the voices if they're saying something that's wrong. Okay. Um, so let's see. And a lot of it goes along with just keeping a positive attitude. I will warn you guys, do not get sucked into the negative Facebook nonsense. Do not get sucked into the virtual party groups where all they do is gripe and moan and complain. I stopped looking at those when I was very early on as a virtual consultant because I was like, all they do is sit on here and complain. If they spent more time working on their business and less time complaining, they would get better results. Okay. So don't get sucked into that at all. Um, I don't, if I, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but I don't allow rants and negative stuff on our team page. I have removed stuff before because, um, it wasn't productive. And if you are upset about something or you just need to get it off your chest, do not go to your sister consultant. Do not go to your team member. That's that you just recruited you vent up. Okay. So if you're frustrated with a host or you're frustrated with something, that's when you come to me or you come to your director. Trust me, Karen gets lots of venting from me. <laughs> you never vent down, all right? So um, just surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you. And I'm going to tell you, this is what this group is going to do. You guys are all moving together towards the same goal. So that's the goal of this group is you guys are moving, you're laser focused. Or this is what we're focusing on for the next 90 days. So you guys can encourage and help one another because you know what's going to happen is one day Jackie's going to be down, but Susan's going to be up. And Jackie's going to post on the group and she's going to be like, man, I'm really struggling with this. And Susan's like, you know what? I was struggling with that last week and I did this and it's so much better now. And so there's going to be that give and take between all of us because we're all going to have bad days. All right. Um, let's see. During this program, you're also going to have homework. Who's excited about homework? <laughs> so um, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to create a vision board. Um, so most of you, so you may not know what a vision board is. I know Nancy and I have talked about a vision board before. This can be something simple. It can be something crafty. If you've got kids, I know we got a homeschool mama on here. She might want to get like crazy with her stuff. Who knows? I mean, I've got so many craft supplies in my school closet. This can be whatever you want it to be. And I had one, I haven't redone my vision board because we had some, some, we had a new director promote Amanda. And so I have to change my, my vision board, um, and add her on there. But you, again, it can be as creative or as simple as you want it to be, but I was sitting in the hospital today with my mom and I sketched one out on a piece of paper <laughs> and I was going to show it to you guys and I left it downstairs. So your vision board is really just going to be about what you want. So if you are close to becoming a director, maybe it's advanced director. Um, for right now, if you don't have anyone on your team, it's going to be a director vision board. So like Nancy and I talked about one time we had a, you can just do the, if this is just an example, don't feel like you have to do this, do a flower with five petals because you have to have five team members. And then once you add a team member, 
put a team member's name in the pedal. Um, it could be a house um, on streets. It could be um, a bee in a hive. We've done owls for leaders before. Be as creative or as not creative as you want to be. But when you keep it in front of you, it makes a huge difference because you can see how close you're getting, okay? Um, so I want you guys to create a vision board. I will post an example of our old one on this group so you guys can see what I'm talking about. It can be digital, it can be on paper and you snap a photo, but what I'm going to do is I am going to pin a post in the group and that's gonna be your homework post for the week. So on that post, I want you to comment and tell me your why. Why do you want to be a director? And I don't want you to be influenced by what anyone else says. This is not about comparing ourselves to other people. Um, some of you are going to promote faster than others, and that's okay. This is your business. You do what works for you. Does that make sense? So don't compare yourself to other people, but I want you to post your why in the comments, and I want you to post a picture of your vision board. Okay, and all you crafty people can show us, show all of us not crafty people up if you want to. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so we talked about our 15 to 20 minute phone calls. Um, the other requirements for um, director bound. The requirements are, um, I want, you know, I want you guys to um, succeed. That is my, all, all the directors on this call and a part of our team, we want every single person that's participating to succeed. And the way we do that is with some requirements. Um, I was participating in the LEAD program several times and there are requirements for that program. And if we don't meet the requirements, we're asked to step away and evaluate whether this is the right time for us to do it. So the requirements for um, Director Bound are eight shows a month. That's the requirements, um, eight shows a month. Um, uh, attend the calls. I understand that a lot of us are trying to run from a hurricane right now. So if you cannot attend the call on Monday, on Sunday night, I totally get that. But I would ask that you try to listen to it within 24 to 48 hours because you won't be able to get the homework done. Does that make sense? So I want to make sure that you have time to do that. Um, I understand sick children. I understand stuff like that. But if you miss the, the calls, um, you're probably going to miss some information. You're going to miss the opportunity to ask questions. So I want to make sure you guys plug into those calls. So show up to the calls ready and attentive and ready to like do stuff. Um, let's see. <clears throat> checking in with your director. That's the third requirement. So you're required to check in with your director once a week. That is that 15 to 20 minute phone call. Again, we're not talking about cats and dogs and weather and all those fun things. This is checking on your stats. And what I would ask too is that you send your director a just a snapshot of that tracking sheet before the call. That way we have a few minutes to process actually what's going on. Um, instead of having to waste that time on the phone, phone call. Does that make sense? Because that time is precious. So we want to make sure that we use it to the best of our ability. All right. Um, and I know the requirements may freak you out just a little bit, the eight shows a month, especially if you haven't been doing eight shows a month. It may scare you. But here's the deal. Um, I, like I said, I participated in LEAD. The requirement for LEAD was eight shows a month, two recruits a month. Eight shows submitted, not even eight shows on the calendar, but eight shows submitted and two recruits a month. And um, we did get some passes in that. Um, so I was a little freaked out when I got invited because I was like, oh, I haven't consistently been recruiting two a month. I've been consistently submitting eight shows, but I haven't been consistently recruiting two. But what they have found is, and what I found, was that when you put the requirements out there, people will rise to the occasion, okay? It pushes you out of your comfort zone just a little bit because I was looking for those two recruits. I wanted those two recruits because I wanted to stay in the program. We also had to do homework. We had homework every single week and it's a lot more than this. So the requirements are to help you succeed. We want you to succeed. So don't get freaked out by the requirements, okay? If you are, then you can talk to me later, all right? Um, let's see. Let's talk real quick about contacts. That's going to be your first thing that you're going to start working on. I told you guys you'll probably need a notebook of some sort. Don't feel like you have to go buy a new one or anything. Don't spend a lot of money on it. If you just have a notebook laying around your house, that's totally fine. You're going to want to track your weekly contacts um, because we're going to be talking about those results on your call as well, on your, your calls. Um, so have you ever heard the phrase winners keep score? 
we talked about tracking our stats from our shows. We're going to track our stats from our contacts as well. So statistics show that when you track your activity, you'll have better results. So um, we're all going to do this together. Okay, everybody's going to be doing the same thing. And I'm going to do this right alongside you. So the goal is you want at least 50% of your contacts to be a new business. Okay. Um, so what's the number one reason consultants don't have enough parties? What do you guys think? What do you think? What? Uh, what was that? What were you going to say, Christy? Not, not host coaching. Not host coaching. Okay. What else? Why do you think people don't have enough shows? Stuck in the same show circles. Oh, stuck in the same circles. So you're asking the same people over and over and over again. Yes. Yeah. So if you feel like you're asking the same people, it's because you are. Right? So that's why we want to focus on new business. You want... That, go, that does go back to what Christy's saying about host coaching, because if you're host coaching, your host is bringing in all those extra people and you're able to meet new people. And so that's new business. Um, so the notebook, what you want to do, um, I am actually going to, I don't want to spend too long on the call on this. I'm actually going to load a, a sheet that it kind of explains how to track and it's going to give you some ideas of what new business is, what old business is. So as you're making contacts during the week, I want you to start tracking it. Um, because the other thing is if you don't have eight shows on your calendar, you're going to have to get those eight shows and that's going to happen by doing contacts. And so you want to start tracking that, um, and writing it down, write down what your results are. If you need to do a power hour once a week, do that. Or even once a day, you know, Karen always told me, she's like, it's, if you, people will just chain themselves to a chair for a day until they have the eight shows on their calendar, then everything else takes care of itself. So if you will get yourself up to that, I will tell you guys, um, my calendar is over full right now, but it's because I've done the consistent bookings. Um, I've done that consistently asking for bookings, consistently host coaching. Once you get up to eight shows a month, it is really hard to fall back down. If you are doing the things that you need to do, you get it to this pace and it's like, crap, how do I get all these shows off my calendar? Because I got too many. And that's when you're like, I need to find some recruits so I can give them these shows. <laughs> okay. And then the, when you're recruiting, it doesn't hurt as much because you're not losing the shows. Does that make sense? So um, we want to work on our contacts and I want you to track them. Okay. Um, let's see. So I'm going to, I'm going to load that, that kind of outline on there. So it'll give you some ideas on how to track them. And let's see if, uh, for the power hour, an example, you work for like 45 minutes on contacts and you're just dialing the phone, just ding, 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 or sending messages or whatever it is, however you're best communicating with them. And then, so do that for 45 minutes. And then that last 15 minutes, you're going to finish up anything that needed to be worked on. So if someone requested a catalog, um, if someone said they, you know, they wanted to book a show and it's like the next week, then it's putting together that host packet really quick, whatever it is, whatever actions need to be taken based on those contacts. Okay. Um, so that's what you're going to be tracking. And then you're going to write down one side, you're going to write new business and one side you're going to write old business. So if you're, again, if you're going back to the same people all the time, that's a problem. It's not going to work. Okay. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. I think that is it. So our first call is going to be this coming Sunday at eight o'clock. I think it's eight o'clock. Yeah, eight o'clock. I will create an event in our director bound group so you guys can see that. Um, but again, guys, I want you to use this group as a way to work together. Okay. Um, if you're freaking out right now and you're like, okay, I totally can't do this. Uh, that's okay. I want you to reach out to me and let's have a conversation about it. Okay. Or reach out to your director and let's just talk about it because a lot of times, you know what, when you're scared, you actually get pretty good results. You know, you just kind of have the like, lump in your throat and somebody, I, I forget who it was. Was it Tabitha or I don't remember who it was that I talked to the other day or Christy, it was somebody. And she was like, I'm just kind of freaking out. And I'm like, listen, if you don't have the knot in the back of your throat, sometimes then you're doing something wrong. It means you're not stepping out of your comfort zone enough. So if you get the knot in the back of your throat every now and then, I'd still do it, guys, where I'm like, should I ask? Should I not? I don't know what to do. Um, then 
this is like that knot in the back of your throat, that's when you're stepping out a little bit. Okay, so it's okay to have the knot every now and then. You'll become more comfortable and you'll learn what to say and learn what to do. So I'm going to open it up for questions. Does anybody have questions about anything that we talked about? Um, oh, you do have one more homework assignment. You have, um, you're going to listen to Abundant Bookings and I will post in the, the director bound group where to find it. And again, use this group. If you are, if, if you have something you want to celebrate, it's moving you towards directorship, post it in this group. If you are struggling, post it in this group. Um, this is a group for you guys to work together and encourage one another. Okay. We're all moving towards the same path and I will post, I will post uh, their homework on there and I'll pin the post to the top where I want you to write your, um, your why and post your vision board. Okay. I know some of you guys already have vision boards, so that should be pretty easy. So what questions do you guys have about this, about uh, requirements, about anything? What do you guys have? Nothing. It's a lot of information. No questions? I know Allison's got a question. You have to have a question, Allison, right? No? No questions. Allison usually has a question. I'm just asking. It's thing from current director, so I'm keeping <laughs> Okay, so um, okay, so Emily has a question. For senior consultant, you need 750. No. Um, Emily, for senior consultant, you do not need 750. You just have to be active. The 750 requirement starts at team leader. Does that answer that question? Okay. One active recruit and 750. Yeah. So, or 150. Just be active. So yeah, so your your team member turned in this month. So you should promote this month, right? Is that what you're asking about? What other questions? I heard somebody. Is there anybody that potentially uh, of our new people that want to come in <clears throat> that might be in a position where when they promote that somebody right underneath them is in a position to promote to? Or are we? Um, I think it's a little early to say that. You're talking about like a simultaneous promotion? Or within a couple of months. <clears throat> I was thinking about talking about rebuild, but that's. I don't, yeah, I don't think we need to worry about that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think we need to worry about that. Yeah, <coughs> we can deal with that on a case by case basis. Um, there is the maximize your opportunity brochure. I mean, this this director bound guide this does give you all the basics. But if you really want to dig in under the career plan, um, there is a maximize the opportunity brochure, and it does break this down a little bit more. So this is something, guys, you need to know if you're moving up in the career plan. You really need to read this and understand it. And the only way to do that is to study it, honestly. I've read this thing I don't know how many times, okay? It's just something that you have to look at to understand because you want to know what your title is and where you're going, okay? What else? Nothing. Um, oh. Can you explain to me what an override is? Yeah, so an override is just a fancy way of saying uh, money we earn for coaching and training. <laughs> <laughs> so when um, directors, team leaders, senior consultants, because we're supporting that that new consultant that that just started, those that's what we call coaching and training overrides. So we earn a commission off of what they sell. For example, um, Nancy's on my team. So whatever Nancy sells, I earn four percent. I earn as a, as a director, you would earn three percent, but you earn a percentage of that, and that's to compensate you for the the coaching and the training. Does that make sense? Did I lose Christy again? She froze again. She keeps ducking out. Yep, we lost her again. Her thing froze. Okay, any other questions? Nothing, nothing. So how many of you guys think you can do this? Jackie, oh, you believe now, Jackie. You got this now. Okay, good girl. <laughs> You got this girl, you got this. It really is a numbers game, guys. If you have the eight shows and you're host coaching and you're asking enough people, you will get there, okay? Don't be discouraged by June, July, and August if it wasn't what you wanted it to be, all right? It is what it is. <laughs> um, don't be discouraged by that. We had some rock star team members this past month. Um, mine was not so stellar. It was the first month ever that I was beaten, so. But we also promoted a new director, Amanda. So we had a good month. We added 12 team members to our organization. That's pretty awesome. 
we're almost to 100. I can't tell you how close we are, but we are almost there. So this is something, it's a good time and um, fall is fabulous. So this is the perfect time to promote. I did it in the fall, it's easy peasy. Just everybody's buying stuff, thinking about, you know, baking and pumpkin spice and all that fun stuff, okay? All right, guys, have a fabulous evening. If you have other questions, please feel free to reach out. Again, if you're questioning whether this is something that you still wanna do, reach out to your director, reach out to me and let's chat about it, okay? Have a good night, guys.